And in that sense, that was a lot more work for us. Because if we had just said, let's have a club for experienced anglers and we all go and fish, we're not doing all that back end work to do the teaching and things like that. But we also wouldn't have built that foundation. We wouldn't have had all those members. We wouldn't have been able to get the funding that we did. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing in the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your host, Master Captain Angie Scott. All right, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventure Podcast. So a couple weeks back, I had a, a local high school fishing coach on the show started talking about, you know, how do we get more girls involved in fishing at the junior high school level? And uh, Gabriella McGrath, one of my guests this week, uh, listens to the podcast. Thank you for listening to the show. And she's been on a couple of times, but she gave me a call with some ideas. And um, and so we want to talk about your fishing club that you've been involved with in college and we've also got uh, Kendall Barker on the show as well from the club to talk about it. So thank you, ladies, for coming on. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about the the club that you fished with. And I know, Gab, you were like the president of it, right? Yes. So I was the founding president. And Kendall is going to be the uh, upcoming president for the next school year. Very cool. Okay. So you didn't have a club when you started the whole thing. Is that what happened? That is correct. When I started attending USFCP, there was no club there. And uh, I worked with a couple of other students and we were able to form that club and get funded within one year. And uh, Kendall and a few of her friends were very good members of the club and wanted to get more involved. So maybe Kendall could share a little bit more about her experience just cut participating in the club. Yeah, Kendall, um, what what kind of sparked your interest to get involved with it? And uh, yeah, just talk a little bit about your experience. Yeah, well, I've been fishing since I can remember. Um, I grew up in like the St. Pete area, so I did a lot of fishing down there. And then I moved away when I was younger. So when I came back to college and I saw that there was the fishing club, I thought it would be really interesting to join and kind of fish those spots that I used to as a kid. And then when I joined the club, it was really awesome because I got to like go out and fish in places that I normally wouldn't think to fish. Like normally I'm used to fishing off of a boat, but there was a lot of pier fishing and shore fishing, which was really fun and stuff that I don't get to experience a lot where I live. Were you kind of more attracted to joining the club when you saw that Gab was running it or were there other girls involved in it? Um, It did make me really excited that the president was a girl. Like, I thought that was really awesome because normally, you know, fishing clubs, I was used to like, it was a lot of guys on the team. So seeing her being the president, it was pretty great. So what, what kind of things did the club do or does the club do, I should say? Um, You know, you mentioned fishing from piers and things like that. Um, Just kind of talk about what, what people that are involved in the club get to experience. Um, either Gab or Kendall can roll with that. Yeah. So with the club, we do, uh, we try to do the trips like uh, to just general fishing spots around the area. Um, The officers are really helpful during those trips. We don't fish a lot because we do welcome a lot of newcomers. So um, we kind of take turns fishing and helping other people who need assistance. And then a lot of members come out who are experienced and, and don't need help. And then we also have educational opportunities. Last year we had a seminar um, and we had a lot of speakers come out and moving forward, I think we're going to do more smaller seminars, um, with the speakers. And then we've also had like knot tying classes, um, and opportunities for anglers to increase their skills. So that's something we will continue in the future. Awesome. So it's, it's just very educational based, um, kind of opposed to what I was talking about with Captain Gary here in Tennessee, where it's high school fishing, but their their main focus is fishing tournaments and definitely some educational stuff involved in that. But this club, college club, is really to educate students on um, inc- improving their fishing skills. Do you guys do any kind of competitive fishing at all with it? So, um, 
we are having a, we kind of compete sometimes within the club. Like we'll have a, a, a tournament. So we were donated a subscription to the fish donkey tournament app, which is allowing us okay. to have a tournament this summer to get our members um, out fishing more and competing. And we're going to have prizes, uh, which are going to be supplied by our sponsor, St. Pete fishing outfitters. Um, and we also had, uh, I just want to backtrack a little bit. We had one big offshore trip. So that was where everybody got to fish. We got to take out a party boat. It was really great. We had 15 members come out um, and we were funded by the school to be able to do that. Um, and it has been education based at, and welcoming to newcomers, you know, that could change in the future and it could turn into a more competitive team. We, we don't know. We'll just have to see where it goes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit real quick. Just a shout out to Fish Donkey um, and, and thank you for them to uh, gifting you guys that. Um, I had Darren on the show way back before it was even the Woman Angler and Adventure, back when it was called It Pays to Fish. And the Fish Donkey app was just a baby. And uh, it's been exciting to see how it's growing and more and more people have been using it. I know women anglers of Minnesota do a lot of um, virtual tournaments with the Fish Donkey app um, and, and a lot of other. My local club here, Team Nashville Bassmasters, has done some tournaments. And uh, it's it's great to see because, um, you know, in traditional bass tournaments um, like the one I fish with the LBAA, the fish live in the live well all day long. You bring them to weigh in and then they get released and it's a lot of stress that they go through. But with the fish donkey app, you, you know, you catch the fish, you take a picture, you, there's a video of you releasing it. So it's a way to keep people honest and, uh, and it's all by, uh, it's all by length. So you have, you have rulers and, measure the fish, take a picture, and then they get released right away. So it's a lot less stressful on the fish. Um, do they have standard rulers that you have to use with that app? Do you know? Kendall, do you want to answer that? Um, so they do, but we kind of modified it. We couldn't get a hold of a bunch of standard um, rulers in time. So we just made it like it has to, it can't be handmade. It has to be like purchased from the store, but they all have like a standardized length. But if it's longer than your ruler, then you just take the video. And that's good. Gotcha. Keep the if the, yeah. But if your ruler doesn't fit in the picture, then you just have to do a video. So. Gotcha. So okay. yeah, it's, it's, you know, we're reviewing the pictures. It's our first time doing it. And the cool thing is also we can make it last all summer. So you can catch a fish today and it counts in the tournament or you can catch a fish August, the day before school starts and it, it counts in the tournament. So. What kind of uh, prizes do you guys have? Um, so we're probably going to be giving away some gear and possibly gift cards to a tackle store. Um, we're still working on getting all the prizes together, but in the past we've given away some rods and reels um, like at the seminar. Um, we also have a lot of small prizes like buffs and wars and things like that to give away for like the wild card winners, which is just a randomized um, winner from the category, which encourages people to enter more fish. Very cool. So Gab, uh, I want to go back just a little bit. Um, since you started this whole thing, uh, obviously it had to be a lot of work um, to get it started and uh, get, get the word out there. Um, did you have pretty good interest in it right away? Oh, yeah, we definitely did. Um, I was able to partner with a couple of other students almost right away to start filling the officer positions. Um, I just, you know, I noticed some people who fish and said, hey, you know, you want to start a club? And and it all, you know, came together. You know, shout out to um, Landon, Lauro. Uh, Lucas, Alicia, and um, Blake, our officers. And, uh, you know, they were a huge help. They came, they all came to the first meeting. Well, Blake wasn't there, but, um, but he came later, but, uh, you know, they've been helpful in starting the club and uh, getting, getting everything done. Uh, Mitch was there in the beginning as well. He graduated and, uh, and, you know, we really, we really came together. And then when we did a couple of this semester, we did a couple of the get on board days where we set up in the walkway um, and students pass by and, 
uh, or at like a rec fest event. We did two of those in one day this semester and we had gained, I, I want to say 50 students that day to our Bulls Connect, which is like sign up to receive our newsletter and things like that. So the interest is definitely there. I think right now we have about 80 students on Bulls Connect and we have about 20 students who regularly attend events and meetings and fishing trips. Very cool. Uh, Do you have any other ladies involved in it or is it a good mix or? It is a really good mix. Um, We were happy that, you know, Kendall and her roommates joined. That was, um, they were at almost every single fishing uh, trip that we did last year. Um, we had one other female officer, um, and it, it was just great to see that mix of, of guys and girls, everybody treating each other equally, nobody, you know, being, you know, too explanatory or anything like that. Everybody just being very helpful to each other. Awesome. Love that. It's one thing, you know, fishing kind of can, can unite people, um, because, you know, if you just have a passion for fishing, it, it, it's a great camaraderie, I guess. Um, so Kendall, what, what being a member of the club, like what kind of highlight experiences stand out to you from activities and seminars and things like that? Um, I would say definitely the offshore trip that we did, um, in April, that was really awesome. It was awesome to see everyone, you know, catching fish and they were all really enjoying themselves, um, the person I was standing next to, Blake, I watched him catch his first ever gag grouper, which was really awesome. And it was just great to see everyone involved and everyone was so happy. They like had the best time. It was just so great. <laughs> I love that. Very cool. Um, any any kind of ed- educational stuff st- stand out to you? Um, I really love like when we go out just on a regular trip. Um, we always have a few people who don't really know what they're doing. Like they're very new to fishing. So watching the officers and everyone around them kind of help them like learn how to cast or bait the hook or like be able to reel it in and kind of avoid rocks. That's really awesome to watch and people learn and yeah. they're really excited to learn. Very yeah. Cool. On the water training is like the best kind, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can sit in a classroom and listen to somebody talk, but getting that hands-on experience is a a totally different thing. So Gab, did you have any other clubs that you kind of modeled this after, or did you just kind of run with it? So to be honest, not really. I kind of looked at the other fishing clubs that I was seeing and they didn't seem as inclusive or educational. And so when I got with those few other students in the beginning of the year and I said, well, how do you guys want to do this? My idea is to have a club that's, you know, welcoming to everybody. And in that sense, that was a lot more work for us because if we had just said, let's have a club for experienced anglers and we all go and fish, we're not doing all that back end work to do the teaching and things like that. But we also wouldn't have built that foundation. We wouldn't have had all those members. We wouldn't have been able to get the funding that we did. So mm-hmm. it really formed organically um, just out of what the first officers agreed that we wanted to do. And we said, yeah, let's make it welcoming. We're in St. Pete. You know, a lot of people come here from all over the country to go to college at USF St. Pete. And, you know, some people have fished in other places. They don't know how to fish here. You know, they wouldn't be prepared to just jump on a pier and start saltwater fishing. So it just seemed like the most appropriate um, approach to take and being involved with all of the women making waves things that I've been involved with, with um, Take Me Fishing uh, and RB- RBFF and working with Debbie and you. It's just um, been the most uh like the most welcoming approach that I could think of and how to get more people out on the water, which seems like a, a common goal amongst um everybody in the angling community. Uh that seemed like the way to approach that goal. I love it. Well kudos to you guys for forming it that way and I think uh that's just a great approach because that's what it's all about. You know, you mentioned that we're all trying to grow the sport. Uh, it's important to try to grow the sport because if we don't, then we lose funding for all the conservation and everything that comes from fishing, like the purchases of fishing licenses and uh, 
there is a lot of aging out of the industry right now with the older generation. So we've got to get the college age uh, people uh, and younger involved in the sport to keep it going. So I, I love it. I hope that other people listening to this, um, you know, maybe have opportunities or know of college students that maybe would be interested in starting something similar at their school. Um, I'm sure they can reach out to Gab or Kendall if, uh, if they want advice on how to go about it, how to get something like that started at their school. Definitely. And one of the other major focuses of this club has been the conservation aspect. So that's another reason why we want to get people out on the water and teach them because if they want to go fish on their own, we want them to be prepared with the knowledge on how to do that correctly and sustainably in our area. Love it. So Kendall, now you're kind of taking the reins moving forward. Um, Do you have any kind of vision or anything um, that you want to add to the club? I really just kind of hope to keep it like Gabriella started it. I want it to be like beginner friendly, you know, because even though we go to school, there's a lot of commuters and people who live in the area. A lot of them have never fished before or fished um, like as intensively. So it would be really nice to keep like helping people, you know, learn how to fish and expand that knowledge. And um, I like to keep the emphasis on conservation. I'm a huge conservationist. Um, I've watched where I live get degraded because people harvest and um, just don't have proper fishing practices. Um, Mm -hmm. I watch dead, huge redfish just float down my river sometimes. It's really awful to see. So I'd like to, you know, kind of encourage conservation and just keep it expanded to everyone. I think fishing, everyone should enjoy it, no matter if it's just reeling in little mangrove snapper, a little bluegill or catching a huge cobia, you know. Just everyone should enjoy themselves, and it's a fun pastime. Get outdoors. Well, I know, Kendall, we talked offline. You said your your main passion is saltwater fishing just because that's what you did growing up. Um, but uh, do you guys include any uh, element of freshwater fishing? Um, we don't, but I've been talking with my friends and other officers, and we're hoping to start to include some freshwater Um, maybe a little bit of lake fishing just to kind of dip our toes into that and kind of expand out because the vice president who's my friend she's very into freshwater fishing that's all she's ever done her whole life so she really wants to expand that and we think it'd be fun to have yeah maybe in the future yeah that was one of our goals starting the club was to incorporate freshwater it is more difficult because we as club officers and leadership need to make sure that everybody has their saltwater fishing licenses, which is free in the state of Florida for a resident. So we just have to make sure everybody goes and signs up. If we went Mm. to a lake, we have to make sure that everybody has a freshwater fishing license, which is not free that everyone has to pay for it. So, and we have to keep track of all of that throughout the year. So it is the next step. We need to make those new, um, you know, take, take record of those. Um, but, uh, yeah, that would be great to see that incorporated in the upcoming years. Well, uh, I know I had uh, Betty Bauman on the show not too long ago who does the the ladies let's go fishing down in, well, she goes all over the place. But one of the things you were talking about conservation that, that she talked about is very important is teaching proper fish handling because in, in saltwater, there's just such a variety of fish that you don't know what you're going to catch and they all kind of need to be handled a little bit differently. Is that a topic you guys have covered? Yes. Uh, So we actually, at our seminar last year, we had FWC come out and um, Gina Russo did an entire hour long seminar, um, pretty much mostly on fish handling and and conservation practices. And then we do that on the water as well. We, you know, the officers are mostly experienced and are able to help all the other members uh, with proper fish handling on the water. Very cool. Well, very cool. Um, Anything else that you guys want to mention or cover? We started this club in the spring of 2021 and we've seen, such an increase in interest and participation and also the funding we were able to get from the school. Um, and because St. Pete is such a water heavy area, uh, it's really great to see that 
activity involved that the, you know, for the college students as an option to participate, you know, not needing any knowledge or anything like that. Uh, we're hoping to incorporate volunteer opportunities in the future as well. Um, we hope to be volunteering with the Bobby Lane Cup in December. Um, and that is a high school tournament. So, you know, being involved with that, we're hoping to reach high schoolers and say, hey, we have this fishing club at our school, you know, and, and again, just sharing what we're doing and maybe other colleges can start these types of inclusive clubs as well. And Love Kendall, it. do you want to share some of your plans for next year with uh, the more trips that you're planning? Yeah. So since we got um, some more funding than we did the year before, we have a lot of room to kind of expand and grow our fishing trips so we hope to do like we did about one fishing trip a month um the past year we're hoping to maybe expand to two just to kind of vary it so more people can come out um you know based on the weekdays it's a little crazy in college and especially on the weekends so to kind of vary that and we're hoping to do um maybe an offshore trip in the fall when more um like seasons are open so we have more opportunity to catch and, you know, like the bigger group or come out when it's a little cooler. So that would be really good. And then maybe a spring trip as well. So we're hoping to really get out there and really, really fish. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about. So, well, it was great chatting with you, ladies. And uh, I, it, it's super exciting, Gab, that you started this and that, you know, it's going to be continuing on. And I'm sure it's going to continue to grow. It sounds like um, we, you've got some great things coming up. And uh, I, I just, I love, you know, the spirit of everybody just trying to help everybody learn. That's that's what it should all be about. So uh, kudos to you ladies for putting in all the hard work to make these events and, and education opportunities happen. Thank you, Angie, for having us and featuring us. And we're really excited to see the future of the club as well.